Cindy where I am back at Borders Berries Farm and we are talking about making jam. I'm so excited about this recipe. Um, I am here with Harriet Busby from Border Berries and she is an expert. Harriet, I do not have a clue. I'm always a bit scared about making jam. So I have came here for years, come with a big um, crate of like a big bread crate and I usually fill it full of tons of berries and I take them back. My mother-in-law makes the jam and I really don't know how to make it and I want to be the person that in my house makes it. How do we start? Well jam is the ultimate way of preserving fruit and it's a fantastic thing to do. Now the key way of making successful jam is actually to start with really good quality fruit. Many people use old overripe fruit but actually if you start with a lovely ripe berry it's got a high pectin content, it sets better, it's just much easier to work with especially uh, your first time around. So what you do um, is uh, make sure that you have really sterile jam jars to put your hot jam into because one of the issues you have is with it going off or getting a bit mouldy. That isn't really a problem if you scoop the mould off, but it's better not to get mouldy ah, in the first so place. So they should be really clean. So we're going to go through that later on throughout the recipe and we're going to show you exactly how to sterilise your jars. But it is important for them to be clean and sterile. Key thing. Yeah. Um, now, the other important thing about jam making is um, to get the right sugar. So you can actually buy jam sugar. There is a difference between jam sugar and preserving sugar. Jam sugar is designed for going in with the berries. Preserving sugar is a bit more for making jellies, getting a clear jelly. Um, and jam sugar is essentially it's granulated sugar with added pect pectin and citric acid. Yeah, I've used this in the past. Um, I've, I've bought this one, but there is a darker red one that is preserving. And that's the one I've bought by mistake. I've went and picked up. So jam sugar is the one you want to get hold of. Now, I have struggled to get this though. It's quite, it's not in every supermarket, is it? It's, quite it's tricky. Struggle. It sells out actually. They sell out, especially uh, uh, in the summer season. So um, you can really easily make your own. And I always do. It's granulated sugar, pectin and citric acid. And where do we get the pectin, pectin and citric acid from? I buy them online. It's not that easy to find them in shops. You can also buy bottles of Cherto liquid pectin and follow the instructions on the bottle there. I tend to make sure, I, I don't use as much sugar. It says one to one ratio on that pack. Yeah. I actually don't, I prefer a much zingier, lighter jam that does require uh, refrigerating after you've popped the seal and opened it. But um, traditional jam, you could keep in a cupboard actually and it'd be fine. So we're making the lighter version today, aren't we? we? And we I are. think that's what more people want, less sugar, still got the zingier taste, it's perfect. So head over to Amazon and go and collect your um, stuff on the internet that you need, um, or head to your supermarket and see if you can get this jam sugar. But like I say, it is pretty tricky to get. The final key point that I would really point out is, um, it's very important to make sure you don't overfill your jam pan because jam bubbles up and boils over really easily. So you should really aim for it to your ingredients when they're all in to, be no more than about, uh, I'd say, two thirds full in the pan. They will cook down a little bit, but you don't want any boiling over incidences. It's really hot and sticky, so a thick base on a pan is almost essential because you will burn the bottom of your pan, and burnt jam is a nightmare to get off. Yeah, so no cheap pans. See if you've got a big, old, sturdy, old sort of cast iron pan or something like that, or stainless steel or. That type of you thing. can use them, just be careful, be very careful if you do. Okay, let's get making this jam recipe. Okay, so most of our berries are in the pan. We've just, so we've got about this half full and we've just got some more to put in. Um, and then we're not going to give you the exact quantities on this video because it's about ratio, isn't it? If you stick to the ratio in the recipe that we give you, you'll be fine. You'll find that you've got totally different quantities. You can do this in really small amounts and you can scale this up, though I wouldn't go more than about two, three kilos of berries at the most. Perfect. So you're going to put the sugar, the pectin, 
And what else in? Citric acid. Citric acid, okay. So um, guys, you will get the recipe. Um, I will link it down below. It's on my website, www.thebatchlady.com. You will also get it on the Border Berries website. It gives you the ratio and lets you decide between sugar and fruit how many jars you want to make. So it is all there for you. You're just not getting the exact bit in this video, okay? Right, so we put everything in our pot and then we just head over to the agar. We're going to, you can choose to leave this for um, up to 24 hours to, to let the juices draw out. But uh, you can skip that stage and put it straight on the cooker if you like. So we're going to skip it. Let's get it straight on the cooker. Okay, so Harriet, you're just going to start mixing that, are you? And can I just ask you a few questions about it as we go? So why would you leave it for 24 hours if you could? It shortens the cooking time, and the shorter the cooking time, uh, the, the brighter your, your berry, your jam will be. So by allowing the sugar to extract the juices out of your berries and begin dissolving, that process all happens off the heat. Now, you can skip it and you can go straight to making your jam as we are today. Yep. But if you've got the time, it really helps to just leave your sugar and fruit together with a bit of a stir overnight. Perfect. So put a lid on the pan, go and put it somewhere in your pantry or in a cupboard or something like that and come back and do it the next day. day. That makes perfect sense. So we are instead putting it on the hob just now, just because we don't have overnight because of the video. And we're just putting it on quite a light heat. Is that right? Just it, to dissolve it's it. It's on down. a low heat because the, the vital thing is to make sure the sugar has fully dissolved before you start boiling the jam. So the sugar needs to be fully dissolved. If you don't fully dissolve it, you will end up with a, a gritty granulated kind of jam. It's like the principle of dissolving sugar in many other recipes. Got you. And um, you told me earlier on today, so that granulated sugar is better than caster sugar. And I never realized this. Granulated sugar dissolves quicker than caster sugar. And I wouldn't have realized that before. So good to know that tip as well. It makes a clearer and brighter jam as well. So. Um, it doesn't matter, you can use cast sugar, it'll turn out totally fine, but uh, it's, quite, it's quite good to use granulated. Use granulated, brilliant. So we're just going to um, let this dissolve down, I'll let you see what it looks like and we'll come back and see it once it's dissolved. Fine, so the sugar's um, nearly dissolved now. I'm stirring constantly, it's really important to keep stirring it constantly because um, it's, it's vital to stop the jam sticking to the bottom of the pan. We talk about the importance of having a thick based pan and the, it's vital to keep the stirring going. It's not, it, it, it's not a job that you can go away and leave. You have to be totally dedicated to your jam making and also be prepared to, for it to take longer than you anticipate. So it might say 15 minutes of boiling time, but make sure you've got plenty of time set aside for jam making. Well, we're sitting here. Can I ask you about the jars in the bottom of the aga as well? Yes. So what we do um, before you start cooking your jam, before anything else happens, get your jars ready. So we've already put glass jars into the oven. You've also put in, as we can see on the shot, you've put in the tops of the, so you've washed the jars, you've dried them, and then you've put them in the oven with the jam lids. The lids yes. also um, are part of the whole sterile environment you're creating with your jam. So you need them to be hot too. And when you come to potting up your jam, those hot jars and hot lids um, need to be used as quick as possible and you screw them on. You don't need to use wax, you don't need any cellophane. You're creating a sterile environment if you make sure that your jars are hot and that your jam is 70 degrees plus when you jar it. So we are not taking these jars out until this jam is finished? Until the is very last right? minute. And modern jam jars, um, the ones you buy in supermarkets, they all have a plastic film on the inside of the lid. It's not just a metal lid. And that film it creates a sterile seal as well. So that's why modern jam jars don't require any of your cellophane and wax discs. Ah. Once this jam gets up to boiling temperature, it should really find a setting point by 15 to 20 minutes. So we're just beginning to get it bubbling here. So I'm vigorously stirring it so that it doesn't start splotting. Okay, so our jam is done. We've been sitting here stirring away and um, 
how do we know our jam's done? So the jam settles down into what we call a rolling boil. So there's a big bubble um, of, of jam in the middle. It's also a lot thicker and splottier. Um, so we can tell it's got quite gloopy. We've evaporated off all the excess water, which is what preserving in this case is all about. We've continued to stir it throughout. And also, uh, particularly if you're making strawberry jam, you might find that you have a light coloured, what we call scum, um, on the surface of your jam when it's ready to pot up. And if you want to disperse those, that, those bubbles, you can pour a little bit of flavourless oil on, just a little bit, about a tablespoon would be enough, and give it a gentle stir, and that should disperse the bubbles. Alternatively, you can just scoop it off and pop it in a little uh, dish and eat it for your tea. So you just don't want that going into your... It doesn't look nice. Eat, but it doesn't look nice, that's all. Yeah, perfect. And so this temperature of a rolling boil, because there's two different ways that we can know that our sugar, that our jam is done, is that we can use a jam thermometer. You can use a jam thermometer, and for this slightly lower sugar jam, I'd say around about 103 degrees C or slightly lower is about right. Um, it's definitely best to go with your eye and make sure that it's looking nice and gloopy and not the runny jam you had at the start, but you can, you can use your um, jam thermometer if you have one um, or a temperature probe of any sort, but don't worry if you don't, you can really do it all by eye. And, and, uh, and if you don't have a thermometer, do not panic. You can get a plate, put it in your fridge, so do this at the beginning before you start making your jam get your, fridge, uh, your plates in the fridge. We've just taken ours out, now what do we do, Harriet? We're just gonna put a small amount of jam, a really small amount, just, it needs to be a plate with a little bit of a lip there. And I should have said that actually it's really important to take your jam off the heat before you do this, because you'll end up um, overcooking the jam whilst you're busy waiting for this. So I've just got a tiny teaspoon's worth there, and we're going to pop that in the fridge for five minutes and do the jam gel test. Okay, we waited five minutes. How's it looking? Well, we're gonna do a, uh, a gel set test now. So if you watch what I do here, this jam has spent five minutes in the fridge and I'm gonna run my finger through it like that. And can you see it's actually turned into an entire blob of jelly. That's a really ready to pot up jam. If it's not ready, you would literally be able to turn your plate and the jam might run away from its little little puddle there. And okay guys, what we should say here is if your jam is running around the plate, then Harriet, am I right in saying we're going to put this back on the heat, we're going to get it going for another 10 minutes. This is if your jam is not set. You're going to get back on the heat, get stirring, another 10 minutes and get this plate back in the fridge ready to retest, okay? And you're going to do that until you make sure that you get it like this. Now we're ready to go. We are going to move everything over, get our jars out and get potting up. Is it potting up? Is that yes, what I think so. Potting up, let's go. So we've just taken our jars out of the oven and it's really important to work swiftly now while they're still really hot. We've got our very hot lids that are sterile as well. We've got a totally clean sterile J cloth for wiping any drips off the edge of the jars and we have a heat resistant jug here, a small jug with a good pouring lip, ready to scoop up some jam and pour it straight into our jar. You can see it's a wee bit messy, but we're not worrying about that because we're gonna wipe the, the rim clean. The fuller you fill it, the less air there is and the more sterile the environment. So just make sure you get rid of any drips on the outside of the jar and get that, that lid on really quickly. And there we go. That is a jar of jam ready for the cupboard. Ta-da! We have made jam. I just, I, I've just absolutely loved that. You have been brilliant at showing us the process from start to finish. Guys, these have cooled down. They are ready to go in a cold, dark sort of place for storage. They're going to last a year, okay, in a store cupboard. Um, use small jars, don't be putting it all in one big jar because once you open it, you then have to use it. Because we have used less sugar in, these, in this recipe, once you open the jar, you need to put it in the fridge, okay? Not in your pantry, back in the fridge. That is how you make raspberry jam with amazing berries from Borders Berries. Thank you so much, Harriet. I'm, I'm, I'm 
uber You're welcome, excited Suzanne. to Suzanne. The kitchen it. smells great, doesn't it? It's amazing. Go and try making some jam. Hoof over to your local um, place to buy your berries and uh, get, get jam making. Ooh.